What is up everybody? I just wanted to go over the plugins that I use and give you some examples of why I use them. Um, the first one on the list here is Able. Um, the tutorials that I'm doing at the moment mostly focus around Able, so I have it installed. AGR Pro is a really good plugin with lots of very helpful components. I suggest you just look it up and see if any of it could be helpful to you. It's completely free and really handy. Blueprint Assist is one of my favorite plugins. It really helps me just keep my blueprints tidy and make working with them a bit easier. <clears throat> so some things Blueprint Assist can do, I can replace nodes, for example. So if I hit Control H, I can replace this with just character. So now I can just cast a character and I don't have to mess around with it. Um, I can say I wanted to change the order of this. Maybe maybe I got my order of operations wrong. I haven't in this case, but I could hit Control Shift and then left and I could move that node to the left and it would swap those places and I could do it again. Sometimes it get a bit, gets a bit confused, but this is where something else that it does is really handy. If I hit Control R, it's gonna clean everything up and that will actually do its best to put everything into like a, a nice state. So let's put all this back. So let's put that there and then I wanted that there and then we're back to where we were. So now, uh, you know, <clears throat> the power of being able to move your nodes around and things like that and clean it up really easily because again I could you know make a mess of this hit control R and it's just going to go back um, it's really really good stuff there's lots of lots of different ways you can have it styled you could have it helixing if you wanted uh, yeah all sorts of good stuff <clears throat> so next plugin darker nodes electric nodes darker nodes gives you the skin that I have mine's kind of like a bluish tint and electronic nodes will give you kind of the wiring that I have. <clears throat> and it has lots of different settings and stuff. You can change whether you want the balls and how fast they move, how big they are. You can turn things, you know, on and off and have all sorts of different features. They just make visualizing the nodes and the, the flow a little bit easier. Uh, no graph assistant, very similar to blueprint assistant. Um, allows me to do things like shaking and it will remove the node. Oh, another cool thing that Blueprint Assistant does, if I do Control Q, I can put this back in line. And then a cool thing that no Graph Assistant does is I can do that and it will auto connect. So you can see how these kind of work together, right? So I can shake and put that off and then I can just put it back. If I keep shaking, it will do all of them and then I can just snap it and I can do that and you're good to go. <clears throat> oh, didn't want to do that. <clears throat> but yeah, all these things kind of work together and they just make working with blueprints just that little bit smoother, you know. Um, next up we have the UAsset Browser, really, really cool plugin. So if I come in here, for example, oh, I already have it open. Okay, so let's remove some of this. So let's just say it's completely blank, right? UAsset Browser, you've never used it before. What does it do? Well, you can add a file or a folder, I should say. And you can pick any folder on your computer. Um, let's do what most people will probably do. I'm gonna go find my Epic Vault. And I can do that. <clears throat> now I have my entire Vault cache available to me. So let's go and do like a Frank RPG one. Okay, we got the mage. So if I wanna pick this animation, let's just say I want a run. Okay, so there's, there's all the run animations. So I want a mage run. So now I'm just gonna hit import. It's gonna take a little bit of time. There we go, right, cool. There it is, so now I have in my content, I have Frank RPG mage, animations, and I just have the running animations. I have everything that I need. I have the skeletal meshes, I have all the dependencies, but I haven't had to import that entire project all the animations that I might not want or need, or, you know, it's really helped keep the, you know, the imports and the the constraints of your, your project down, right? Stop you having a load of bloat, effectively. <clears throat> and last but not least, Vardump Plus. I really like Vardump Plus just for visualizing my variables. So if I hit Control-Alt-D, it's gonna bring up this little window and I'll show you how we use it. So, um, yeah, this will do. So on left shift, uh, 
let me do let me just type dump so we can do we got variable dump we got update dump and we have one other one that I actually created this and this is watch dump so if I just do this to start with and we'll just return this so every time I activate this ability we'll see what it returns let's just compile and try this so actually does nothing why is that I don't know let's do something else let's do random flip <clears throat> let's just make it easy maybe that enum value doesn't return okay there we go so <clears throat> It allows me to just kind of like watch this float, right? There's a float happening, and every time I press it, we get a new value. We get a new random one. <clears throat> now, you could update the dump, but you have to make the dump first. So, in most cases, you would create the dump on like begin play, and then you would, you know, have that value there to watch, and then inside the code, wherever it's used, you would then update it, and you would plug that float in that variable flow in and, and push the push the update. However, in UE, there's lots of places where maybe this is just an event that triggers and ends, right? <clears throat> so I created my own watch dump. And what we'll do, we'll do random float again. And what it effectively does, if I double click it, because I made it in Blueprint. Oh. So it would be a sequence and it will do once and then it would do a variable dump. Um, and effectively that do once never opens again, right? So after that, you're just gonna do the update and then it's gonna push the output. So if I put this here and we do that, uh, and then we just clear the dump here. Oh, there we go. Now you'll see the, uh, yeah, we created the dump and now we're just going to update it instead. So yeah, really handy for just, you know, putting things in line, checking floats, checking variables. <clears throat> you can extend it and like put your own enum values and things in. I know it's quite uh, good for that. But uh, yeah, just helpful for visualizing stuff. Uh, yeah, so that's it. That's all the kind of like my general go to like plugins that I'll have in every project. There are others as well, but they're a bit more niche. So uh, yeah, these are the ones that I'll be using in my tutorials going forward. And I just hope that clears things up if you're kind of watching some of them and a bit confused. So uh, yeah, thanks very much, guys. I'll speak to you next time.